Hi, Guelph Moms. It's Tamsin. Welcome to the Tamsin Connects Guelph Moms podcast. I've put this together for the members of the Guelph Moms Supporting Moms Facebook group. I hope that you find it useful and helpful. I'm connecting members of the group with each other and with resources and with fun ideas for things like self-care and keeping kids busy while we're trying to work from home or our home, our kids might be, we might be homeschooling, our kids might be homesick. So I hope you find this helpful. If you would love to suggest another topic, get in touch with me, give me feedback. If you'd love to be a guest, you can always contact me through the Guelph Mom Supporting Moms Facebook group or private message me on Facebook. And you could also reach me through email, tamsin at tamsinconnects.com. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome. Hi, Guelph Moms. This is uh, another podcast episode, and I have with me a special guest, um, Roblin, who is, uh, I was introduced um, by a mutual friend, and um, Roblin is not a member of the group, but she is local to Guelph. So I will ask you, what is something you love about Guelph, and then maybe introduce yourself a little bit, and then we get to talk about grief and the pandemic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so my name is Roblin Honeyset. I've lived in Guelph for 17 years now. Wow. Um, I chose to move here. And part of the reason I chose to move here is because of the trails, because I love cross country skiing. Oh, wow. And I love the arts community that's here. So that's what brought me to Guelph. I didn't have a job. Okay. I didn't have a house. I had nothing. So I moved here and it was a great adventure for the last 17 years. Okay, well, we were recording this, I think it's November 2nd right now, and we just had a bunch of snow, so maybe you'll be able to cross-country ski soon. <laughs> um, uh, need a little more snow. More, more, <laughs> more, but, well, and supposedly more it might be, might be going away this week. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, yes, uh, I love the, I was a member of the Art, Guelph Arts Council for a little bit, and it, it is a really, it's, there's a, definitely a creative vibe here which is very very nice I like that too um, and so can you just take a minute or two and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and why um, why you're interested in emotions and grief and all that stuff and then we'll get talking about why it's so relevant right now okay my introductions to a lot of grief started when I was young Okay. Um, I had a lot of lo losses. Oops. Did I freeze <laughs> on you? Yeah, you froze on me. Okay. Oops. <laughs> there we go. So what, what would happen was I lost my children. Um, I lost a six-year-old and I was nine months pregnant and I had a stillbirth all in one year. Wow. So at 20... I guess it was 28. I had lost a lot as far as being a mother. But just to top that all off, within a year, they told me I could not have any more children. Mm. So that was another loss, another grief process. But part of the problem was in my community, there were no support groups for moms who had late miscarriages or late stillbirths or um, even miscarriages. I couldn't find any for early miscarriages either. So, or for loss of children under 12. So if, they, if you'd lost a ch child that was 12 or over, there was a group, but if you lost a child before that, there was no group in my community. Wow. So at, I wasn't quite 29 and I started a grief support group for moms who had lost their children. And I did it for six and under because I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't have a whole lot of experience <laughs> other than my own loss. Yeah. So that's how the grief and loss process came through it. Um, I also, dealing with emotions, I've dealt with people through work um, who have addictions, and there's a lot of loss there um, with overdoses. I've dealt with uh, moms talking to their moms who have lost their children to addictions okay. because I understand the addictive process, and that's a really hard one right now. Um, yeah. 
So I have two and a half years, I became a foster parent and I have two and a half years towards a social work degree. Um, and then I started doing grief management somehow. <laughs> that became part of my stream of things that I do. Um, and so right now I'm actually writing a book. It's called Fostering with Love. So that's what I'm working on. I'm also working on finishing my certification to become a professional grief trauma professional. So I'm almost finished with that, thankfully. And then I have to write all my exams and do all that craziness. So I'm used to dealing with grief and trauma uh, based situations. Also, okay. I kind of look at grief a little differently than a lot of people because I think education is really key, okay. which is can come through all sorts of streams that happen. I think making yourself strong through grief is different for everybody. And I don't think we have to follow five steps of grief in order to accomplish what we need to do, because really the grief is about the loss of whatever the loss is. It's because you loved the person, you loved your animal, you loved the situation, you loved your job, whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's where I find that grief is different for everybody. And it has to be, you can have set parameters, but at the end of the day, it comes down to educating yourself so that you have the tools in your toolkit in order for you to manage. Okay. Yeah, you're hitting on a bunch of points. I got my education in grief and and I think grief, we tend to, people tend to think of it as a very narrow thing. And yes. with, if somebody has died and that it's a very, it's limited to only like, that it's almost a feeling, but yes. my training I got through the Grief Recovery Institute and um, they emphasize a lot of things about what you're saying, that grief is very individual. It's a very mm -hmm. individual experience. I think that's really important for people to understand, but it's also about all different kinds of losses, right? And mm -hmm. I think um, when you lost your children, people can probably say, oh yeah, you know, they would classify that as grief. But mm -hmm. for me, I really got interested in it when I realized me becoming a mother was also a grieving experience because I lost everything that was familiar to me. I wanted exactly. it really yeah. badly. Um, and it was, and part of it was really, really good. Mm -hmm. But I thought people were exaggerating when they said you wouldn't have time to shower. You know? <laughs> I thought, yeah. what? But with a newborn, you like I just found my whole life and I dealt okay with it for the first few months. But then when my hormones shifted and everything, it was just, and I was totally exhausted. Um, and it really opened my eyes to the fact that any change, when I went through my training yes. and they, they emphasize that any change is a grieving experience because you lose the familiar. Yes. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to bring you on and talk today. Of course, in the Wolf Mom Supporting Moms Facebook group, there's lots of people who go through miscarriages. There are people who've gone through stillbirths. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are losing parents, grandparents. Um, there's a lot of kind of acknowledged losses. Yes, yeah. Everyone with the pandemic has lost the familiar. Every Everybody is going through a grieving experience and I really wanted to kind of let people know, yes, it's individual. You're feeling what you're feeling. Yes. And you're not weird. It's not, it's a grieving experience and you get to have the grieving experience that you have. Um, mm -hmm. Our kids are going through it. We need to help yes. our kids through it. We need to help ourselves through it. And to just acknowledge that one of the other things is conflicting feelings are totally normal. Like my son is so flipping happy to not have to go to school. Yes. But he was very sad to not be able to go trick or treating with his friend. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So there's all these things that changes have come and are happening and to be able to acknowledge maybe some of it's good, maybe some of it's bad and all of these things. But I think a lot of us feel kind of emotionally out of kilter. I would agree with you on that. Yeah. yeah. I think and a lot of people have not realized that it's okay 
to be not okay in that day. Like whatever your day looks like, it's going to be different the next day. And when you have kids that miss their friends and yet you're worried about them going, you know, even going to school, that emotions, like I've talked to so many moms lately where the conversation was, I have my child. Do you think I should send them to school or not? Yeah. Right. So there has been a lot of that come my way and a lot of asking because for them letting go is a bit of a grief process because they're worried which is totally normal right and and for some reason they don't think that that's a normal emotion like oh I should feel this way school start and I should feel like they they should go to school if you choose to homeschool your child because you're worried you can still socialize them with like homeschooling has small little groups. You can have neighbor, just make sure they're all in the same bubble. But the grief that I feel that the parents have talked about, they don't recognize it as grief, as a loss of self, as a loss of what they feel should be normal. Mm -hmm. And I think your sense of normal has to adjust each day to what your emotions are and allow your emotions. This is the other big thing I keep running into from parents is, well, I, I shouldn't feel that way. So let's not do that. Let's not do that emotion. I don't want to feel angry <laughs> today, frustrated and I, I'm frustrated, but I can't let anybody see that. And, you know, cause I'm supposed to be the strong person. You know, I get to do everything. I'm invincible. Well, you know what? It's okay to feel you'll get over the anger if you feel it first Mm -hmm. and then you can adjust. It's when you're not feeling your emotions and just allowing them to hide that eventually things start happening to us on a physical plane that maybe we don't want to deal with later. So let's deal with the emotion, whether it's, I'm really happy today because my kids all got dressed and they were ready for breakfast on time because they have to go to school. Now, you may think that's being simplistic a little, but all moms know morning rituals are some of the hardest ones to get through. And sometimes we feel so frustrated when our kids don't get ready on time. Come on, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I was fostering, I would have sometimes six kids that all had to get ready for school. (laughs) So some mornings I was like, and then I would be like, okay, it's all right to feel that emotion. And, you know, to allow our kids to feel those emotions as well. Um, I had a young man stay with me and one of his emotions was he would act out and he'd get on the floor and have a temper tantrum at, and he was five. Now, you might think that that's not okay for a five-year-old. So after a while, I just got, I said, you know what? That looks pretty handy. I'm feeling that way too. So I got on the floor with him and had a (laughs) chance. And then he got up on his his feet, put his hands on his hips and said, Roblin, you look really silly. Mm, Interesting. (laughs) But... (laughs) At the same time, all the emotions that I had, of it, instead of getting frustrated with them, because it was like a daily rich and nothing I did, the emotions I was feeling, like, I feel like I'm a failure when I don't get the child to where he needs to be. And it's like, okay, why do you feel like a failure? It's because you lost someone, something of yourself, right? So if they're losing themselves on the floor, lose yourself on the floor is what I say. Just go with it. <laughs> yeah, maybe not in the supermarket, but <laughs> <laughs> no, that's usually under that's usually under the arm and walking out the door with them. <laughs> well, I think I think you you've brought up a bunch of different points, and I think um, it's really hard. And one of the things I still struggle with, as I I agree, emotional education to me, we are not educated about our emotions and what to expect and how to deal with things, which is why so many of us are terrified about negative feelings. And we Mm -hmm. don't want to let ourselves feel them. Um, But as a mom, I still struggle with uh, how much of my emotion to show my son and how much not. Because 
it's important to let our kids know we have feelings, that we have feelings too, mm -hmm. right? Because as soon as we try to not show them that we have negative feelings, it's almost like we're, we're telling them negative feelings are wrong and bad. And that's part yes. of the messaging that negative feelings are wrong and bad, right? But at the same time, you don't want to scare your kid. And Exactly, yeah. And I very rarely, I think, get to the point anymore. I know things like, don't let myself get hungry because then I get anxious and irritable, right? Like I've learned yeah. some things. But when I have a bad day, I let them know I'm having a bad day. And part of it is to let them know it's okay to have a bad day sometimes. But part of it is too, I've been told my feelings, like people could feel my feelings. <laughs> I project my feelings. Right. And I want, I want him and also his dad to know it's not them. Mm -hmm. I'm having a bad day. I don't feel well. This thing, the black cloud, you're feeling you haven't done anything wrong. It's not about you. <laughs> right. But part of that is just stating it just like you did. Right. Mm -hmm. I used to tell the kids, I would say, look, I'm not having the best morning this morning. So if I get grumpy, I apologize ahead of time. It's not yeah. you. It was a, one of my lines that I would use all the time with my kids because, and I would say, you know what? I need to take some time to myself. Are you okay taking some time to yourself? I, I didn't, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't believe in time out, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> time to yourself is good and that teaches you to deal with the emotions, right? Okay. So if you need to deal with emotions, time to yourself, is a breathing space, right? So a lot of the kids would, that's what I would do. Okay. Yeah, yes. it's hard. I think a lot, well, and I'm extroverted too. So part of mm -hmm. emotions is to share them with someone else is part of kind of the processing piece. But yeah, especially yes. I've heard from a lot of introverted people in particular that they like to be by themselves and to kind of figure out where they're at and what's going on before they mm -hmm. share it with anyone. Um, but grief is, is something that um, I've been taught anyway, is something that we need to share in order to let it yes. go. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, the thing is that depending on what the grief is connected to, the support system may not actually be there and the recognition may not be there. Um, so I know that sounds really strange, but if you get a divorce, there's a whole grief process going there. People don't recognize that as a grief process hmm. and the loss. So as a community, as a society, yes, you're divorced. Okay, something bad happened. And you have approximately six weeks to deal with that and move on. <laughs> and be you know. back to your old self. <laughs> Whatever that is, the back okay, to your yeah. old self. Meanwhile, you just suffered something that somebody you loved and you've lost the person because at one point if you married the person you loved them right so Hopefully. right there presumably yes presumably. <laughs> I suppose there are circumstances where you don't have that but um the majority of time you would have loved that person and if you're so grief for me is acknowledging the love that was there okay. for whatever the process is. So, so it's acknowledging that love. It doesn't mean that all the negative things didn't happen. Yeah. But when you really feel the sense that you've accomplished and dealt and walked through the grief, what you should have at the end is a sense of love. Okay. At the end of that, right? Because it's a love for yourself. It's a love because the loss has occurred. So it's about the love at the end of it but the thing is you got to go through all the crap first you got to yeah. go through all the negative stuff you got to go if you're angry just be angry and I find with the pandemic there's a lot of anger yeah but people don't actually acknowledge it as anger They're, oh yeah well that's just you know change that's just change that's just change yes but you're angry and there's a lot of fear, a lot of fear. Oh. 
And yes. La because it is interesting because I kind of have my son has special needs and quite often in the morning he you were talking about morning rituals I only yes. have one <laughs> and they have one to deal with and it was still quite often really hard to be on time for things to school he was like yeah. he would just protest and no doesn't want to go yeah um so I just tried I worked very hard for like probably the last two years or more to be okay not knowing how things were going to go so being yes. very, very mindful that I'm not in control of this whole situation, mm -hmm. that it's, it's yeah. teamwork between him and I kind of, um, yes. and I found it very interesting that so many people feel such a loss of control with the pandemic. And I'm like, it was just an illusion anyway. <laughs> How many of us have had, you know, the unexpected, the car, uh, the car accidents, the unexpected diagnosis, the something happening mm -hmm. to a family member. There are so many things that, that just regularly happen in life that are unexpected. But we, yes. try, we try to ignore, we try to imagine we have so much more control than we do. Mm -hmm. And that the need for control is totally fear-based, right? It's like, and then I always say, well, what are you afraid of? Like, what exactly are you afraid of? Yeah. Like, and being that narrow focus, which most of us are, you know, we're just focused on what we're doing. And so if we're trying to control that focus, it, it's going to hit us backwards and we're going to, it's going to hit us harder. And mm -hmm. I think it expands things. So then our fear gets bigger right because yes. we haven't really dealt with okay where did it start and why are we doing this mm -hmm. and it's okay to be afraid that's the other thing can you admit that you're afraid that's a big emotion it right is. being afraid is a big emotion because for some reason in our heads people think that we shouldn't be afraid of things, that we should be just fearless all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, wow, <laughs> but like in our brains. And it's like, okay, yeah, let's go with that. But the problem is when we are afraid, we need to feel, I'm going to go back to feeling the emotions. Mm -hmm. So if you're afraid, feel it, work through it and walk through it. Because at the other side, there'll be something great, you know? something great and that greatness is oh I feel okay now I've moved from being afraid to okay you know I'm not fearless and maybe I'll go back to being afraid but right <laughs> now I'm okay I've worked through that little bit of fear I'm okay now mm -hmm. I can breathe right mm -hmm. um I think with all negative emotions people have been taught to Run away, run away fast. You know, Push it away hey, or like, numb it out, like buy it, it out, buy something, drink something, eat something, do something to exactly. feel differently. And yes. And you realize that in the traditional grief, pro, uh, you know, psychiatry, that's what they tell you to do. Do something positive for yourself. Go have a drink, go shop, go Take a do pill. this, go <laughs> distract yourself, go over. Yeah. My whole theory is, hey, you're human. We're given all these emotions, positive and negative, and we have to learn and feel through them and educate ourselves that it's okay. I think that's part of the hardest part for people to accept, that these emotions are okay and um it's like i don't get angry a whole lot but when i do you know it right like i don't i have a red hair everybody thinks i lose my temper all the time <laughs> but <laughs> i don't actually <laughs> but when i'm angry i you know i am angry the biggest thing about taking anger and it's okay for me to be angry but it's not okay if I take my anger out on somebody else if it has nothing to do with that person mm -hmm. so that's where 
that's where learning and educating ourselves, okay, if I'm angry with you, I have to, I have to say, I'm angry with you because of this, right? And if it's, maybe I'm angry at myself and I have to look in the mirror and say, I'm angry at you because you did this and you know it's not the best thing for you. Mm-hmm. So if I sat and ate two bags of chips, I would do that to myself. I would go. <laughs> I know that sounds simplistic, but well, I would I, be angry yeah. with myself, right? Mm-hmm. I, I would think be it's, angry. Yeah. It's interesting because yeah. I, I, I don't know if I want to go too deeply into what each individual emotion is telling us because I, I have this yeah. book called The Language of Emotions and it's really fascinating. Right. But I've talked to several friends about, about the whole, it's almost like um, what the legal system is supposed to do, right? There's, did you do the thing? And did you mean to do the thing? So our feelings, yeah. when, we, when we feel something, it's, um, there's an effect of that emotion. Like if we feel, if we feel sadness, right. it doesn't feel really good, right? And that's, that is an effect that that feeling is having on us. But at the same time, the intention and why we have that is not to hurt us, it's to help us, right? Because mm-hmm. it's part of our evolution. It's, we're hardwired to do that. And mm-hmm. if it didn't help us survive, it, it, the people who had that hardwiring would have died out. So we have the hardwiring we do because it helps us somehow, right? And we just live in a very different world than we evolved in. So our wiring is a little bit messy. <laughs> It's a little bit screwed up for the world we actually live in, right? It's like, I think rejection, fear of being rejected, rejected and the pain of being rejected, um, I think is a perfect example because we grew up, we grew up, we evolved in um, small, highly interconnected groups where if we were rejected, we would probably die. Mm -hmm. And that's not true anymore but we still have right. the pain that is meant to keep us alive. We're meant to yes. avoid rejection because it used to kill us. Right. And so when people say, oh, just go through rejection enough that it doesn't bother you anymore. Well, that's kind of retraining your brain a little bit, but, but I also want us to acknowledge that the pain of that rejection is real and, and it's trying to help us. We have it for a reason. And mm-hmm. so it's not just, oh, you just shouldn't feel that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to feel each emotion. And and I like the idea that there are friends that even if they hurt, they're trying to help us. Okay. And so to give to give the actual feeling that they're creating space so we Mm -hmm. can feel it and maybe hear what it's trying to tell us and maybe it's trying to tell us something that doesn't apply, but it's still trying to help. And when we push it away, it just screams louder. Yes, I would agree with that. Because it's trying to yep. save our life. <laughs> so, so I think that that's probably, um, I guess some of the, maybe you have some additional takeaways, but, for, but from our conversation, I would love people to take away that our feelings are our friends. Please be willing to feel them. Mm-hmm. And that we can expect all kinds of emotions right now because the pandemic is a big, huge grieving experience and we're all in this huge change no matter what it is some of us have certain negative things happening certain of us have other positive things happening the picture of it like you said is going to be unique Mm -hmm. but this is a very emotional time and experience would you like to add anything to that um i think i would just like to add one really big thing and that is when you're traveling through your emotions whether they're negative or positive, make sure you're feeling them and that it's okay, whatever they are today. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Hopefully this will help some people because I think you're right. We're not, we're taught to avoid our emotions. We're taught that they're, we're taught sad is bad, afraid is bad, angry is bad, right? Yeah. That's very true. And uh, I'll just go back to Brene Brown. I love Brene Brown. And she says in her very first, in her first TED talk that has, I don't know how many gazillion views, um, you can't selectively numb emotions. We're taught to numb out our negative emotions, but you can't selectively numb emotions. 
So we end up numbing all our good ones too. And then we wonder why we're miserable. Yes. Right? Because yeah. again, to save our lives, our, our system is geared more toward negative emotions. Like fear is more likely to save our life than joy. Yes. So we're geared, our system is just geared more toward the negative naturally. Yeah. And so when you numb everything, all this left is kind of this low, miserable hum, <laughs> which sucks. <laughs> I don't think I want to be a low, miserable hum today. No, no. I think, and that's when I think Brene Brown says, that's when you go for your beer and your banana nut muffin, and then you wonder why you're still miserable. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. I enjoyed this conversation. I hope that people will take something out of it and be a little easier with their feelings. And mm -hmm. um, since this is for Guelph Mom Supporting Moms, also putting it in the context of your kids are going through this too. Yes, definitely. And your partner, if you have one, and the rest of your family. And um, and I just got a knock on the door. So maybe this is a good point to end. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, much. thank you. So I hope you found that episode useful, fun, interesting. If you'd like to give me feedback of any sort, I'd really appreciate it. You can private message me through Facebook. You can um, reach me through the Guelph Mom Supporting Moms Facebook group or you can email me at tamsin at tamsinconnects.com and I hope to see you back here again. <laughs>